Um, first up, this so meeting is being recorded. Thank you, Alexa. All right, public comment for items not on the agenda and additions or changes to the agenda. Mark? Hi, uh, thanks a lot for the chance to talk to you. I'm Mark Mahali. I'm the president of the East Callis Community Trust. Um, I wrote you, we, we, I just partly, I, I, um, I'm, I wanted to tell you about this, what I think is a really great development. And we do have a request in there. I don't know if you can deal with it, given that it's not on the agenda, but um, there's this organization called Everyone Eats, which is funded by the federal coronavirus relief. And it's made possible through a grant funded by the Agency of Commerce and community development. And it has, it basically provides meals to people in need. Um, they're, they're simple, they're pre-prepared by restaurants that are paid to do it. And they have about a dozen locations in central Vermont and in Chittenden County. In central Vermont, there's one in Cabot, Waitsfield, Barrie, Montpelier, and Lamoille County. But they contacted us and there's, no, there's, there's nothing in this immediate area. And they asked us if, the, if, if we would cooperate to provide the meals. I think it's once a week, uh, that's my impression. Um, and just do it on the rain or, or snow or shine, do it on the porch of the uh, store. And uh, we, we're enthusiastic because we, we want this store to be a resource for the community even before we actually renovate it and open it as a store. So uh, we wanted to let you know and have any thoughts you might have and hear any thoughts you might have, but more importantly also, um, we, we could arrange for snow removal, but in the day that it's gonna be distributed, we were wondering whether it might make sense to ask the, the town snow plow to make just a pass in front of the store, one pass, and uh, we'd probably take care of the steps. So I'm going to recuse myself from this um, because I'm on the ECCT board as well. So um, select board members, any comments or questions for Mark? Rose. Go ahead, Rose. I think it's I think it's a great idea. Um, I heartily support this effort. Um, we see every day on the news, um, the long, long lines of um, people lining up for food distribution, people that have never asked for food before. Food insecurity is a real, real, um, you know, evident thing in our society. And it's made way worse by the COVID pandemic. So I totally support this. I think it's a great idea. Um, and I think that the town should be able to instruct the road crew to make um, a pass through there um, just to keep the front area clean of snow so there's no hazards. Thank you. Um, John or Sharon or Cliff, do you want to add to the conversation? Yeah, I completely agree with Rose. Thank you for putting it so eloquently. I just want to hear from Alfred about whether he has any concerns. Hi, Alfie. Hello. Uh, so this is just for the one-time deal for that for that one event, or is this you want it done all winter? No, no all winter. Be, yeah, yeah, it's, it's probably be, gonna, it's probably going to be once a week. Once a week. This is going to happen. Yeah. Once a week, uh, Alfie. I think I think it's we'll know. We don't know yet. They just contacted us. We don't know yet, but I think it would be at a fixed time once a week. John, any comments? Well, if we start getting snow like we used to get in Vermont, <laughs> um, the crew would have to keep up with it. It's not like you can put snow out of the way. And then you're going to have to figure <coughs> out where you want it pushed to, Mark. Uh, I know there, there are no longer pumps, so it's easier to get in there and just do one quick sweep, maybe. Yeah, I think it would be because you know, we don't have to worry about that, you know, the sort of U shape it has, it could just be pushed into there. All we want to do is keep the steps clear. 
I mean, the you know that front part in front of the steps so that people could pull in, uh, pick up the stuff. Or drivers, we if there are people who can't make it themselves because they don't have access to cars, maybe we're going to get volunteer drivers who will bring them out to them. Do we have any concerns about liability? I hate to be the lawyer in the room. I guess I'm not the Wait. only one. Mark made a reference to uh, law, the, the law school, so. Well, I think you, unfortunately, well, actually, uh, uh, despite all the lawyer jokes, I don't mind that you're a lawyer. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, it is an issue, but I think it's addressed by our liability insurance. We, we, we Noel Johnson provides us insurance and we've been in constant contact with them about the act each time we think about an activity. And in fact, for one kind of activity, we had to pay an extra little bit of money. So I think that before we do this, we'll be in touch with Noel Johnson just to make sure that our liability covers it. Well, and then if that's the case, then we probably should have some kind of a contract so that we are clear that the town is indemnified and that the ECCT's insurance is covering. I would be, I would be in favor of that just a letter contract that says we'll indemnify you. We recognize that you've on a voluntary basis provided snow removal occasionally and that you're not undertaking any liability and that it's ours and that we'll indemnify you and hold you harmless. We can well, do You'd that. have to clear that with the insurance. Yeah. You'd have to clear that with your insurer, right, Mark? Yeah. I think um, and then of course there's a shovel detail. You have to get somebody to do the shovel detail. Right. Um, yeah, that's work. that's separate though. Yeah, we'll take and care of sand. that. So, Mark, will you will you present us with a proposed contract that we can have Jim look at from the town's point of view? Sure. Happy to do that. Okay, we're meet our next. Well, we're having a special meeting on November thirtieth, but our next regular meeting is December fourteenth, um, and we will probably find out sometime along from Maggie as to when they anticipate that this might start. Right. I mean, I think that, that, you know, I'll, I'll get the contract to the town, but I think it's not pressing. I mean, if there's snow before we get that contract, we'll take care of it ourselves. Yep. That sounds good. Okay. Um, so one, one thing to remember that this is private property that the town is then contracting with to do the work and it sets a precedent that you better be aware of that there's not any contingencies that are gonna come up afterwards. Well, one thing that does occur, I, I thought about that. One thing that occurs to me is, you know, I don't know that this is a long-term arrangement, but it, it's COVID related. And I think that if we continue to do this next season, when we would be asking for snow removal by then, I think we'd have to have some sort of more formalized arrangement. So well, and Toby, you could say it's, a, it's because of the COVID emergency that the town is doing this. Also because of the food relief, Mark, if you could make sure that the contract actually includes that, it's, it's not for ECCT for coming yeah. and going of the general public, it's for specific delivery of food in the COVID pandemic. Right, there's the food insecurity issue and there aren't a lot of places between here and Memorial County that have this, uh, have the ability to do this. Right, right. But and I, if- an, I will make sure it says that, okay. Well, and to Toby's point, if another organization stepped forward and said, you know, ECCT is, is Mondays and we are gonna be Thursdays, then we might say, great, we'll, we'll contract with you too, you know, to clear the, 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 the path. Um, in, in, a, in other words, Alfred, I can hear you getting nervous, but really it's just about being really clear that, that this is a, a huge public good, a specific and a specific public good. All right, so Mark will get that letter to the board. Yeah. It'll, it'll just be a contract and I'll, yeah. we'll get it to you guys. Thank you so much. So just, just um, we're, so we're off that topic, but on a related matter, since we brought up the concern of allowing non-town properties, uh, we no longer own that school. 
Um, do we need to get a similar arrangement uh, signed with the Unified School District? Um, because we continue to plow the school door yard, right? No, actually, we don't plow it. We just oh, on occasion. We, we on occasion sand it if it's icy. That's all we do is sand it. Oh, okay. They have, they have it. a con. They have mm -hmm. a contractor that plows it. Yeah, pal Chuck. Okay. Oh, I know him. Yeah. So he so he talks the whole time he's plowing. <laughs> So, so we'll approve, we'll formally approve this, this initiative when we have a contract that we're endorsing. Does that sound right to the board? Yes. John, everybody, yeah. Yep. I see okay. hands shaking. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Great. I'll get you the contract in a timely manner. And thanks, Mark. Thanks for all your And then you can work. agenda. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks to you guys. Take care. All right. Yeah, bye, Mark. Thanks. Okay. Bye, bye. Scott, did you have something you wanted to bring up to the board? Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Denise. And <coughs> I swear it's purely informational. I should have realized that if I pop up unexpectedly in a meeting, it might spook people. But um, <laughs> it's been it's been way too long since um, we've just had a chance to, you know, connect with all of you. Um, we're just everybody, I guess, is all consumed with their own thing. Um, and right now, um, the coronavirus is is everywhere. And it's, um, uh, it's popping up in our schools now. Um, you heard undoubtedly that Callis has gone remote until um, Tuesday of next week so far. Um, and U32 is remote for day and tomorrow. Um, this basically came out of last Wednesday's uh, surveillance testing of staff. The, um, the state is, uh, as I understand it, trying to test everybody on um, generally on a four week rotation, um, everybody being uh, adults in schools um, on a voluntary basis as well. If you don't want to be tested, you don't have to be tested. Nobody's forcing you. But, um, this last sort of thing on Wednesday turned, um, you know, to a few cases that might not otherwise have been detected. So um, the uh, I think the school's defenses are about as good as they can be, um, all the schools, but this this virus is just so treacherous. Um, if, there's, if there's a way to get in, it will. Um, and stop if, say, because the internet is unstable. Um, so just wanted you to be aware of that. However, we're main main aim is to keep the schools operating as long as we can do that safely. There, um, just as you were saying a minute ago, Rose, about um, food insecurity um, being one of the current situation, uh, that's, that's part of what school is addressing well. In addition, particularly for, for our more vulnerable students, um, families that are in a more precarious situation. I think it's important that we try to do the best we can by them, um, which is to have them in school and not get sick. So that's, uh, it's um, from day, the picture can change. So um, it's pretty intense, as I'm, I'm sure, you know, you're operating with the town, you, you have a a good idea of that, how that can be. Um, on the bright side, it's budget season, and we have a public forum coming up on December 2nd, a week from this, and uh, the forum. Scott, if you turn, Scott, if you, Scott, if you turn and, off your video, sometimes that helps.
Yeah, thanks, Denise. Yeah. It will probably help a lot also not to have it. Okay. So December December 2nd, um, budget forum at, I believe, at 5 o'clock and, and publicized. But um, so far, the, what we're looking at is um, there's a huge range and just so much uncertainty. It's, it's very difficult to tell what's gonna, which way it's going to go. But one thing that's really important is that the legislature really need uh, to hold us harmless on decline in pupils. Otherwise, we could really have any increase in our, um, in our budget. And it's certain there will be because all the COVID, everything that, COVID, that the COVID money paid for is a lot of that, especially the personnel um, increases are gonna have to be for our base. We're now not only in the education business and in the social services business, we're now big time in the public health business. So um, the drinking water is an increase of 0.7%. Um, the over in, in education for last year, the um, kind of hopeful budget is plus 4.7% over education spending last year. And we're trying to reel that back uh, significantly because we're being hit hard, um, particularly if Congress continues to dither. So um, if any of you are interested, you would, all of you would be welcome to attend that forum and to you know, hold our feet to the fire and ask tough questions because I, I think you know how school budgets and it's even more so now that we're combined. It has, you know, it, it's, um, it's a super tanker as opposed to a PT boat as it was maybe in yesteryear. Anyway, that's basically. Are they going to? But are, is the school to, board actually is the school board actually going to take yes. questions? Yeah. Um, the uh, basically we set it up. There will be fifteen minutes of dog and pony, and forty-five minutes of public discussion where the where people have the um, the floor. Okay. Denise, FYI, Sharon somehow lost her internet connection. I was wondering what so, happened to her. Um, I was just going to try to call her. I just got a text. Um, You're gonna Scott, try when is that forum? It's on Wednesday, December 2nd, John. At 5 o'clock, you said, right? Um, starting at 5, I, yeah. Somebody's got background noise. And where do you find where do we find the link? Anyway. How do we find the link to that? Um, it will be sent out. Um, we'll we'll be we'll be flogging it um, shamelessly once uh, once it's released. Okay, it so should come out towards the end of this week, Friday. That doesn't give people much heads up time if it only comes out on Friday. Yeah, so we're gonna, um, I think Dorothy is gonna be writing about it um, and, uh, this week, they're trying to give people a heads up, but you're right. Um, I think the board members in the other towns should be doing the same thing for their people as well. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good to know. Thank you for the update and we're all have, in this we're all in this covid thing together so yeah i have a um yeah, go ahead sure, John. John. go ahead i know ahead. that with regard to colleges I, I know that with regard to colleges um and uh foreign exchange students that the administration the federal administration trump administration if you will uh deemed uh students that were attending college remotely as not complying with their educational visas and therefore how to split town and get the heck out of the country. That was a few months ago I heard that. 
And of course it was a big concern yeah. for all the colleges and universities. Um, I, I was also wondering, it, is the federal assistance that's being provided to schools, uh, it's, it's tied to student attendance, correct? I mean, historically, and if students are working remotely, I, I'm assuming that that is still considered attendance. But if, what if a student is flagged as yes. being a carrier? Do we lose the the subsidy, the daily subs, federal subsidy, if they're not attending school? But but they're healthy um, otherwise, and maybe they can remotely participate. That's a question. Yeah, um, I, if they're remotely participating, then we still, we still get credit for them. Um, we don't get credit for the students who have gone over uh, settling. And that's where we've lost um, uh, you know, a significant percentage of our enrollment this past year. So this is why the legislature uh, and a lot of it is because of COVID, because you know they're uh, and they, for whatever reason, they don't want to participate in the in the um, remote uh, school that has been set up alongside all of the physical schools. So um, that's that's our concern that you know any increase of the, <coughs> the education spending per, uh, will be amplified because of the decline in the denominator of the equalized pupils. Oh. Yeah, I can see that as a concern. Yeah. Okay, is there anything else? We're already um, half an hour almost behind. Cliff? Cliff? Yeah, just uh, I had something to put out in front of the select board that uh, the Callis Historical Preservation Commission uh, as you know, they've been working on having the adamant area recognized as a historic district. Their project for next year will be to have the Maple Corners area recognized as a historic district. Um, they're getting ready to file their grant submittal. Uh, so the question is, is does the board want to speak with uh, anyone from the um, Preservation Commission before they file this grant? We'd have to put them on the agenda for next Monday. Do we have to sign any paperwork that we would need to get um, the board to approve signing the paperwork? It's a CLG grant, right? Yes, there's nothing that the town would need to sign off on. Um, there's no money involved for the town other than we would have to uh, pay the consultant and then the grant would reimburse us for that. Everything else is um, in kind and it's uh, donated time by the members of the Preservation Commission. When I read David's, when I read David Sheets's email, it said something about um, having me sign something. So yeah, I think there, there may be um, we, you know, might need to sign a letter saying, yeah, we support this or whatever. Okay, so I uh, think we should put it. I think we should put it on for real quick on the thirtieth when we meet. Okay. All right. So if we can do that, and I'll let David know. He said he's more than happy to show up and talk to us about it. John has a question. Um, not just to follow up. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking, Denise, in, in structuring our our agenda going forward, um, maybe under public comment, we could have COVID updates. You know, yep. COVID discussion. Open it to community as well, because. Yeah. Uh, as much as we, we would be updating community members may as things get if it gets really ugly th there may be a low level panic if you will where people are wanting to check in with us in the community and ask yep. us what I was actually assist or have you or I, inform I was actually thinking along those same lines earlier today John so I think just in every meeting okay update or if there's nothing yeah. then we don't have to but yeah I agree okay Okay, so can we move on? Thank you, Scott. Do you have anything else? I, I do not, Denise. Many, okay. many thanks to all of you and a great Thanksgiving. Yes, and the same to you and your family. Well, all right. An all Thank right you, one. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Scott. Scott. Take care. Okay, um, trying to move things along as quickly as we can. Um, Sandra, do you want to give us a quick update, Treasurer? <laughs> Um, delinquent tax. I did read 
your and look at your whole report. Um, Cliff, do you want to call it up, please? Yeah, give me a sec here. But in the meantime, Sandra can get started. Hi, David. We're running behind schedule. Go ahead, Sandra. You're on mute. Hi, Denise is up. Uh, referring to the last section of the report concerning delinquent taxes. And uh, this is uh, this financial report is as of October 31st, at which point there was roughly $5,200 in outstanding 2019 delinquent taxes. But as of the writing of this report, pulling the report, November 21st, there was $1,700 in 2019 delinquent taxes. So we're really, um, we're closing in on that. And in terms of the tax collection effort today was the close of the grace period. Um, outstanding as of su Sunday night, uh, no, as of Saturday night, the outstanding uh, taxes for the second payment were 319, three, let's say $320,000. So there were 50 checks that came in today. I haven't processed them. Um, probably another $50,000. And historically, the town goes $200,000 in the red at the end of the collection period. Um, and we are at 385. I think conceivably we're going to, you know, be at our historic mark at the end at by the 30th when all the postmarked checks, checks postmarked on the 23rd will have finished rolling in. And so we're, a bit, we, I project we're going to be in about the same boat delinquent tax wise as we have been in at this point for the last very many years. So that's uh, not great news, but that's good news and that probably we're not going to see any larger delinquent tax um, balance than we have in years past. And I'll know more about that on the 30th when, as I said, when the last of those postmarked checks should, would be in. Otherwise, we're in good shape. We're rolling along. Everything is on track. Uh, there is one line item in the general government section, uh, the IT disaster recovery line. That line is a bit inflated. It, it is about 72%. We're only at the 33% mark in the fiscal year. Um, I suspect um, that once I research with RB Tech what charges uh, are attributable exclusively to the purchase and installation of the rep of the replacement server that is located in the office. What those charges are, they will be booked out of there as an as an accounting best practice, and booked into um, a long term debt expense line that was created last fiscal year when we took that loan. And so I'm hoping. Uh, by next report, that 71% will look much lower. The, the number, the expenses will still be in the uh, budget, or rather will still be uh, shown as, expensive, as expenses, but not in that line. Highway looks good. I don't see anything alarming. I think Alfred and Toby are here. And uh, they can speak to that, but they look on track. I imagine we're going to see that reimbursement shortly. And uh, that's what I have to say. Any questions? Any questions for Sandra? Treasurers or delinquent tax? Awesome, awesome work on the delinquent tax. I think that's the lowest it's ever been. Well, I think uh, it's a good talking point for the select board when folks react to the level of delinquent taxes at the close of the tax effort. Um, you're, you can say that over the last uh, 
few years, you know, we get that we get that down to ultimately to zero. We have no 2018 taxes to collect. So the focus will be on collecting the 2020 taxes and creating payment plans. Uh, I've already been contacted by a number of folks who anticipate needing a payment plan. And so that's great because they are, there is already a buy-in for that and an acknowledgement that that money has to be paid and, and paid on a regular basis. Okay, excellent. Any, any questions for Sandra before she signs? You can stay, but you can sign out too. I am gonna sign out. I, we haven't had our dinner yet here, so uh -huh. unless you need me for some other purpose. No, I don't think so. Thank you. Have a good evening and good supper. All right, everyone. Good night. Thank, Thank you, Sandra. Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the wave. Bye. Bye. So Bye. Ne next up is operations manager, and we have the form to sign for the municipal roads general permit. This is the form that we have to do every year, and then it gets sent in along with our payment to the state. And I think it's in the it's in the folder, right, Katie? So we just I just need you to authorize me to sign it. Uh, Toby, do you have any comments on it? Um, this is just an update amendment uh, from what we've already paid this year. Yeah, we have to send in our $240. Right, it's it's not the annual fee and agreement. It is an amendment for specific work. Okay, any questions for Toby on this? I don't. See, uh, anybody got their hand up? Okay, so would somebody like to make a motion to authorize um, me to sign that form, please? So moved. I'll there second. A okay. We'll take a vote. Cliff? Aye. I'm an aye. Rose? Aye. Karen? Aye. John? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything else, Toby? Um, yeah, the permit uh, for putting up the radar signs in East Callis is complete. Um, we've ordered um, a couple of foundation bases that we have to put in for the poles and Hopefully within two weeks, we'll have them in place. Right. Is it, do you have, I've gotten some feedback on the sign in Maple Corner. Um, it's, it, I wondered how you picked the location that it's currently at. Uh, it seemed appropriate as people come down into town, they should be reducing to 25 miles an hour. Right. Um, because several people asked me how come it wasn't further up the hill? Where, because it's still 25. Right? Quite people a bit will forget the when they when they pass to buy that sign, they'll forget and they'll be doing 30 again, 30, 35 through the village. Okay. So it's closest to the village, which is most most of where the problem is. Okay, I just okay. So I just wondered how you how you picked that so I have a good response. Um, just so you know, the sign actually does record speed limits of people going through the sign. Oh. There, is, there is a report that I will generate and send to you. And it's interesting that the first couple of weeks that the average violation of the 25 mile an hour speed limit is over 79% of the cars going through there. Wow. So we'll see if it gets worse or if it, if it makes a difference, I guess. So Toby, where, where is that information stored? Is there a uh, SD card built into it that you, un, you download from or what? Yeah, it has, <clears throat> it has memory inside the sign and I download it to a laptop. What a beautiful thing. Yeah. Awesome, Toby. Great. <laughs> Well, it. well, it's only it's only good if you utilize the information you get. So right now, almost eighty percent of the people coming down that road are exceeding the speed limit of twenty five miles an hour. And you'll so you'll be storing this data where? 
Um, I, will, I will just record it on the on the town's laptop from uh, from the garage, and we can look at it depending on when you want to look at it. Okay. Maybe Toby. we should, maybe we should get a game camera so that we know that thing probably says the time of the speed exceedance. Um, John, the, is there the a clock camera, on it? the game camera you need is this the sheriff that would really slow people down. Yep. Well, it would be cool. It would be cool in lieu of the sheriff because we don't have them all the time. If we could install a game camera on top of it, and if that thing recorded the speed and the camera took the picture, we could send emails out to our citizens who like to <coughs> go through town and wake them up to the we're a community, and we need to all pull together here. Toby, if I'm understanding you, it is it's recording the speed as they approach, or literally at the point of the sign itself, is that right? That's correct. So we don't really know the impact and result of the village's experience. Well, when they're going by the sign, they're exceeding 25 at that point by 80% of the vehicles going through there. Whether they slow down when they get to the bottom of the hill or not is um, unknown. And, and so uh, can you also say though, 80% uh, of the vehicles going through are exceeding the speed limit. Does it give you data on to what extent? Like, you know, mm -hmm. are 80% of those who exceed exceeding by fewer than five miles an hour? Yeah, it does. It does have categories, but about how many people are doing 50 or whatever. Wow. Okay, good. But, you know, as a reminder, that's 25 all the way up the hill and on the flat. Yep. Mm -hmm. Before you hit the incline down. So right. I think I I I think you should gather, certainly gather more data. It'll be interesting to see if that changes over the winter as people get used to the sign. Does it go up or down? I'm curious about by how much they go over. Um and yeah, I think it's really useful. I certainly think it's it's way premature, guys, to conclude it isn't working and not useful. Well, the other thing that we might be able to do is pull out, out time of day when most violations are, and then we can assign the sheriff to be there during that time period. Right. All that stuff. Yeah. Awesome. And we, and we can also, when we have some good data, we can post something on Front Porch Forum. Right. Yeah. When we have good data. I, I yeah. think that, the, I, think, I think it's great and it's a beginning, instead of wringing our hands and wondering and all, each of us having an opinion and version of the facts we've got data yeah real pay attention to the science to toby does it give you the uh, date and time of the speed speeder um i'm not sure how refined it is essentially it, it has every minute or every 10 minutes or whatever it has time blocks and how many cars went through and how many of them were above the speed limit at that point and uh, there, there are, you know, how many cars go by, there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of different charts. I will put a set together and send them to you to look at. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Anything else, Toby? Uh, that's all I know about. Um, anybody want to talk to Doug Lilly about the big posts he put in his yard that are right at the edge of the right-of-way? Are they in the right-of-way or at the edge of the right-of-way? <laughs> right at the edge of the traveled portion of the road, there's a ah, you're in the right of way. So they're in the right of way. Well, the right of way is 25 feet, so everything in Doug's yard is is in the right of way. But it, they're close. They're solid posts that are put in on the roadside, um, right at the edge of the travel portion, which means there's no place to push the snow at that point. So what do you mean by what do you mean by posts? Are they wood? Are they cement? Are they rocks? What what do you mean by posts? They're big wooden posts. Like four by fours? They're, they're cedar fence posts, probably five inch diameter. You mean laying, laying flat on the ground or standing up? Standing up as a fence post. So like like you would use for an electric, uh, electric fence, farmer posts. Yes, but they're like Maybe five inch diameter. Them. He needs to remove them. They're a safety hazard. Yeah, but if we tell him, he'll just laugh. So uh, it's your ordinance, and I suggest that the well, select board send him a letter. Yeah. Please be advised; they yeah. need to be removed. 
So Katie, would you put in the to do that we need to send Mr. Lilly a letter? Thank you. All right, Alfred. Um, any updates? Um, nope, nothing major. So you'll see I put an agenda item on as I got to thinking more and more about COVID and the recent spike in Washington County. Um, we should be thinking about, and I would ask you to think about and come back to the board with, what would we do if two of the road crew members had COVID, everybody in the garage was exposed and had to quarantine for two weeks? What kind of a backup plan could we or would we have in the event that we had a storm and had to plow? Who would be available and how, you know, there's, um, there's a thought about something I got from, I think, VLCT about talking to our neighbor neighboring towns and coming up with some kind of a mutual aid agreement. Um, so that's why I put that there because my thinking cap was on like, oh, what would we do? We had a major snowstorm and the road crew was all unavailable. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, other towns are plowing their roads also. So I don't right. think they would have manpower to give up to to us, nor would we until our roads were cared for. Um, well, the, the idea in the mutual aid thing that I was reading was what you said is true, but in the event that there was a major snowstorm, a couple of towns and you know our neighboring sister towns, what could we do to get some of our work done maybe on the main routes to be able to help other towns get their main routes done? I mean, right now, if schools close, it's not such an issue with school buses. But so anyways, it's just something that I think that we should be looking at and thinking about. And I would ask you and Toby to be thinking about this and come back to the board with, a, with some ideas. Denise, well, I really, I think, go, go ahead. I think to, we need to, I think we need to search for some more part-time help. Uh, regardless of COVID, um, we just added another route to our to our infrastructure, yeah. so that takes up my spare guy. So I think we need to try to get some more spare help that will come in on occasion or uh, in a in a time like that that we would need. So I think we need to start. Um, implementing some some more some more living bodies that can drive a truck yeah i wonder if there's a way to work with some of the other towns to see if we could share spare people i don't know i'm just thinking that we need to be you know and this is just worst case scenario maybe we won't need it and if we don't that's good but um i don't know if you talk to like the road crew and uh East Montpelier and Woodbury and I've already I asked I did reach out to Bruce Johnson and asked him if they had thought about this and it's not even on their radar so right well I think I think that we're all in sort of in the same boat I mean we are all uh, already in the end of this um, with equipment I mean I've lent my grader to Worcester I've lent my truck to Worcester uh, Last, I don't know if last year or the year before, uh, East Mount Player used our truck. Yeah, I remember that. So we're 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 already doing that mutual aid thing. I just think it's going to be difficult for manpower because we're all short. We're all going to be short, and not every town has spare guys kicking around that can drive a truck mm -hmm. and that are eligible and are are in the drug system pl drug yep. testing plan and in the. Uh, CDL license. I mean, there's, you know, I think we definitely have some legwork to do there, but uh, give me the green light and I'll see what I can do to find some more part-time people. Um, hey, Sharon, Sharon wanted to talk and then John. Alfred, what I'm hearing is the green, is the green light um, and more accurately a request to bring forward your thoughts on the whole thing. And I, I love that you're like out of the gates with we need more people. I'm not sure I heard a green light to go ahead and hire more people right now. Um, 
the other th and I and I again I think it's um, I hope that we're thinking about this holistically. You know, where's the breaking point? If we have five or six guys, then this is what we can do. And then and then it's um, and Denise's point of collaboration. That's one way to go because whatever our strategy is, I would I think the board would would want to be really involved in approving it because the other half of it is there may be a break point where we have to do a lot of careful messaging to the community yeah. about what's doable and what can't happen in a pandemic. Yeah, I think we all need to. We, I mean, there's there's some guy called Pelchuk. <laughs> yeah. Might, he, might, he might could be added to the list in an emergency. Well, I was just thinking if... Um, does you he know, not already it, have route that he has to do? Yeah. Doesn't okay. he have a plow route of his own? Um, Greg? Not, he is scaling back years and years. He's just doing trickle. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say is, um, is it worth it to just advertise for part-time um, spare per diem drivers just to see what response you get? You know, people who may have worked for like Pike or in construction that, I mean, that are laid off right work now. In, yeah, if they work infrequently, maybe it wouldn't screw up their unemployment, but maybe just so that you might have a pool of two or three people just to see what's out there. I mean, it might not hurt just to, and, mm -hmm. and be clear as put it as, um, as needed basis, like per diem, um, just to see if you get, you know, you can always hold on to some resumes or applications, keep them on file. That yeah, I'm, might just, I'm, just, thought. I'm just asking us to, to put this, I'm just putting it on the radar because right. it, we, we may not have this problem, but I think we need to at least be thinking about it and see what we might come up with for a plan. So I would ask that you guys work on that. Mm -hmm. And then John, you wanted to comment? John? Well, um, this would this would need to be brought to the governor's office, I expect. Um, I'm looking at the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration page, which deals with CDL licenses and when they're required um, and when they're not. Um, and there's an ability for a state to issue a waiver to the CDL requirement for drivers where they it's it's an emergency vehicle. Hmm. Like fire fire departments, Boy. states are already issued a waivers to them, right? They're emergency ambulances. But I'm wondering if the state could we could approach the state about them issuing waivers to towns in the case of this COVID emergency, if we get in a bind, if we can allow comp otherwise competent drivers to drive our trucks, uh, yeah. could the state grant that permission as an emergency, in, in emergency ca cases of an emergency? Well, I can, that's a good idea, John. Um, I can go, I can go back to the person who sent me the VLCT stuff about the um, mutual aid idea. I can, I can double check. With, yeah, I, I mean, well, that would free idea. up that would free up a lot of competent drivers who just don't happen to have their CDLs, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and then also would VLCT, how would the insurance work? So it's, I mean, we've got some work to do, but I think we just need to be thinking about it. And well, as long as it's legal, as yeah. long as it's legal, uh, it should be all right. It's, provi it's a proviso under the federal regs. Yeah. It's just how they define what is an emergency vehicle. Um, can you send me I'm that? I dug in. Can you send me that link and I can contact yeah. this person at VLCT? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Alfred? Uh, yes, there is. A um, couple things. I have I've been sort of kicking tires on a on a, another truck. Uh, because our 2009 truck, which is now our spare, uh, we're going to be starting to use that as as a everyday route, um, and it's in and out of the shop every time it goes out. It's getting old. It's got over 100 130,000 miles on it. 
Um, it just barely came out of the shop in Williamstown today. I haven't got the bill yet, but I know it's going to be sizey. So I'm starting to look at some used trucks to see if we can't uh, replace that one with something a little bit newer. Um, so just wanted to make you guys aware of that, that I'm looking, and obviously I will cross it with you before I do anything, but uh, I think we need to think about replacing that 2009 truck, particularly now because it's going to be on uh, it's going to be on its own route, everyday route. Okay. Um, so, um, and then the other thing is, I I really want to know why I'm not being appointed for road commissioner. It's very challenging for me to go into work every day without any ground to stand on. Well, you're, you're, you, um, continue, you continue to serve as road commissioner until... But I am not appointed, and I should not be making decisions that I make every day without being appointed. I am spending a lot of money, town taxpayers' money. Works. Pardon hey, me? What? Alfred, that's not how it works. You are your appointment is continued until your the decision to reappoint is issued. So you're we're last going on six months. We're going on six months of not being appointed. I am not comfortable with it. It's I'm just telling you, Alfred, you are you remain as road commissioner as previously appointed. It's that simple. So it's that simple. Okay. Well. It's okay. not that simple for me. It's just not that simple for me. I want to know what's going on. Well, we're not why I'm not to... being appointed, why I'm not I can't talk to my guys. Morale is terrible at work. It's not good. And I don't feel like I have grounds to do anything about it. So I just want you guys to know that. I don't know and where you're getting this from. Where are you getting this from? I go to work, How's John it? Braybury. I go to work board. every single day. I All go right. to that yeah, town I'm... garage every single day. That's where I'm getting it. I'm seeing it every single day. You guys need to come and talk no, to me. No. Or you're going to find somebody Why else. Why can't you talk to your guys? Why can't I, you talk be, to your guys? Because you, you guys told me I can't talk to them because of the union. Did not. No. You got it. Yes, you, got it. you, you got very it. much did. Told me I cannot talk to my guys about about proceedings with the with the negotiations. I don't know what you mean. We said that the negotiations are confidential. Yes, they are. Separate from me. I cannot talk to my guys because I'm supposedly management. However, I don't sit in a seat called management because you guys don't appoint me. John, I need to talk to somebody. Either I'm going to talk to my guys or I'm going to talk to the select board. I need to be on one side or the other. Alfred? I'm dangling in the air. You're, we we need to take this into an offline. Right, Alfred, this is not appropriate. This needs to, we need to do this in executive session. Okay, I've been asking for a month or more to go into executive session to talk about this. Please, let's go into executive session so I can talk and know what I'm doing here. Well, okay. Alfred, you, we are you start. aware, Alfred? Alfred, you're you're kind of you're. It feels to me like you're yelling, and I just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Okay, I am sorry. I want to know what's going on with my job. And my lifelong position, I have been, I've been 22 years working for the town of Callis. I'm feeling like I am not being treated well. I want to know what's going on. Please okay, come into executive session. Bring me into executive session so we can talk about it. Okay, here's, the, here's Alfred. You need, to, you need to take a deep breath right now. We don't have, we are not going to be able to go into executive session tonight. We hear your frustration. We are still waiting to get results from the latest union negotiation that we had. There's been varying circumstances, as you know. 
And no, I really don't, Denise. I really don't know anything of any part of the negotiations. Week, Denise. Yeah, well, we'll Denise. schedule and we'll check. We can talk about this we'll next week. Do an executive yes. session. Thank you. I would appreciate that. I will certainly be there. All right. Thank you. Good. Um, when you come, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Sharon. No, I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> uh, uh oh, your internet sorry. again. Go on. Okay. So um, one of the items on our agenda, and maybe we want to move animal control to a different place on the agenda. So we don't, because we have Nick and David Healy and Bill Powell and um, John McCullough is on too, to talk about um, the LGER stuff. We can talk about the animal control issue either next meeting or maybe move it to the end of the agenda. I'd be fine with that. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry, folks, that things are behind schedule. So last we met on. Hey, Denise. Yes. What? I just want to let you know, I, I my internet connection is pretty lousy, so I'm going to be shutting the video off a lot tonight. Yeah, there seems to be a bad night for it. I don't know if it's because it's pretty windy up here. I don't know if that makes a difference. I'm going to do the same thing. Good idea, John. All right. Um, so let's talk about LGER. So Sharon and John, if you want to speak, would you use the um, what's on the re on the reactions? Would you use the? They can raise their hand. There's a function mm -hmm. to raise your hand. Okay. Um, so let's get right down to it. We had our meeting on the 16th. We um, decided against consolidated. Um, David sent us an email. Well, oh, John, do you want to say something? I see a something there. No, I'm I'm just reacting. Oh, I'm okay. Reacting. Oh, you're I'm not, like over, not overreacting, reacting. So, David, why don't you give well, us an update? I did with a part. David, why don't you give us an update with what you found out with CV okay. Fiber? And yeah. you also sent us an email that, um, well, I guess it was today. And then there's the draft letter to Velco. So why don't you take sure. start out? So following the meeting last Monday night, I did talk to Michael Van Baum at about Alliance about his ability to install a, another fixed wireless solution on Pekinbrook area. And he said he could probably do it, but it wouldn't be any guarantee that it could be done by December 30th, which according to Nick, when I talked to Nick the next day, Nick said the money had to be spent by December 30th. So I sort of took that as a continuing saga of my COVID-19 broadband emergency experience where every idea I've come up with has been um, killed. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's the sad part on, on my possible short-term solution there. Um, the other email, uh, the other thing I said I would do, I, I would find out what the status is of Velco running the fiber line from East Montpelier over to the Maple Corner um, substation and I talked to uh, Tim Wood Weiberg at Velco today, and he, he indicated that the plan as it currently exists with WEC was to hopefully complete that, that fiber line sometime in quarter two or three next year, which from a standpoint of CV fiber is, is great timing because that's when we're planning on doing our first routes. So I was encouraged by that. And um, so I, I still think it's worth a letter from the select board to Velco and, you know, just showing how important this fiber line is to them, uh, to us. And uh, we're on record to do that. So that's my summary report. So is Vel Velco's different than WEC? Correct. They run the transmission, they manage the transmission system and try to keep things reliable and working. And so WEC is try to is part of the network that they're supporting. And so the fiber that they're running is really for network management 
and Bill's here, he could probably talk to that. But it, it also has enough excess capacity that we could lease fiber from their line, not all their lines, but all their fibers, but some of their fibers to run our network. So that's sort of the, it's a, it's a win-win um, for everybody. So. And you were gonna, you were also gonna talk to CV Fiber and see if we could be first in the queue instead of second? Yeah, we haven't met. We meet only once a month. Oh, when's your next meeting? Um, December, December 8th. Okay. So I'll, I'll make sure it's on the agenda. Okay, Bill, do you want to weigh in on the, the WEC piece of it? I won't weigh in any further than just to advocate David's on the right line here. Um, a letter from the select board would help. Um, I, I don't know that it'll make any difference, but it's certainly a affirmation of the select board support for fiber to serve our town. So I think it's a good idea. Okay. And Bill, do you want to tell the town about what WEC is trying to do with fiber? I'm not in a position now, okay. folks, to really disclose anything. I think there's a lot of flux. Um, there's been some federal FCC money that's now come into the area. That's significant. David knows a lot about that, and and his team at Vermont uh, Central Vermont Fiber will be able to speak to that more. Um, but just back to the main issue, it would be helpful to have a slick board letter to Velco to say that they support you support. Um, you know, whatever support uh, Velcro can give to WEC because that's the next step. So, you, so David, you already drafted a letter for us. Yeah, and I have you CCing WEC and um, the management at uh, Velcro. Okay, Cliff, can you um, call up that letter? Stand by, please. Excuse me. Hang on, it's taking a minute to get it open. Hang on. Okay. Anybody have? Well, Cliff's getting that. Any questions for David or Bill? Okay, should be on the screen now. Okay, thank you. It needs some editing. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> quarter two or three of next year. Anybody have any comments on the letter or can we, as a full board, approve this? I can't, I can't speak up because I can't see who wants to talk and who doesn't. Denise, it's Rose. Um, I looked at the letter briefly tonight and I made a few edits, but okay. um, if I think based on what David said that quarter two or quarter three of next year is okay, then that's fine. Um, what I put was, could they like speed it up a little bit? Yeah. But we if get that's, it, we if get that's not necessary, then we could go with his, you know, letter. That's fine. Yeah, and I see there's some typos, so we can fix that. Yeah, thank you. Right. Um, I'm just gonna go around. Cliff, any thoughts on the letter? Yeah, I, I agree. We can clean it up a little and uh, get it out ASAP. Okay, where's Sharon? Uh-oh. She's giving thumbs up. Okay, um, John? It's a beautiful thing. All right, so can we clean it up and um, I can sign it and put all of the select boards and names on the letter so it's from the full board? Thank you. Is that a motion? Would somebody like to make that motion or second it? I'll uh, make the motion. Okay, and I'll second it. Any further discussion? I'll second. John will second. Okay. All right. We want to anything and, else? And I second it. Yeah. Okay, so we can vote on this, and then we can go on to other things about LGER. Okay, Cliff. 
Yep. Bye. I'm an eye, Rose. Aye. Don? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Okay, so more stuff on LGER. So we talked before about going back to our other plan, which was the phone system, the copier scanner laptop for the zoning administrator. Um, I don't know if we could also get a better scanner printer for Sandra to use. Um, I did get an email that she, as you noticed, she was working, having difficulty with connectivity and therefore she was working extra hours to get um, done with her treasurer's delinquent tax collector report um, over the weekend. That's one of the things which they've been encountering when they've been working from home. Um, I did ask the, e what I said I would do was ask the ECCT board um, if they would be consider renting a space in the store building to set up a temporary location for somebody to work. And that board is willing to consider it. Um, it would probably be something that would be, take some time to do. I also checked with Melissa Bruff who has the white, she has the white house if you if you go past the store on the right, headed I think it must be south. It's that big white house there, and they have offices office space already set up, furnished. They're individual offices, no shared. Everybody has their own restroom. They have high speed internet. Um, and Cliff, you can correct me because I don't really know how to say this right. It's either two two hundred up and up or down, and twenty up or down. I don't know which is the right way, and if that's good. Well, either scenario, the 200 up down would be really good if they've got fiber. Um, that's probably what they've got. Yeah. And the rent for that office space is $400 a month. Denise, what about the, and or Cliff, I don't remember, uh, I don't remember where this fit in, but I know it's something that, that we were Rather than uh oh, Sharon, you're cutting out. I'm guessing Sharon's probably asking about the possibility of if we can't bring the fiber to the server, putting the server to the fiber. Is that what you're alluding to, Sharon? Maybe a thumbs up or something. Yep. Okay. So um, I I would suggest if we want to look at that possibility i go ahead and ask reuben bennett from rb tech to join us because he could better address the question yep you want to do that the board's board's or, pleasure i'll go ahead yeah, and pick or if we could clone if we could clone our server you know if we could, if we could what john okay if we could I just clone him our to server him to so we us. could have another server in town yeah Okay, so while we're waiting for Reuben Bennett, that's my update on what I said I would check out. Um, so Denise? Yes. Denise? Yep. Do we know if, do we know what this LGR, whatever you call it, money, that has to be uh, committed or the items have to be put in place by the end of December. If we entered into a year lease and we paid it forward, um, or we paid it up front, uh, would that count as an eligible expense? I guess that that's this is our COVID triage. That would be a Nick question. Yes, that would count uh, as long as the all the, everything hardware was installed and the service was operational in use by December 30th. The only so the only rent, thing we could rent two of those. Um, she and also Denise, Melissa. We could rent. Yeah, Melissa said she would also give us a. She would consider giving us a, a discounted rent. So it might be less. We than don't $400. necessarily need. That. Right. We don't necessarily just, need a discount. We use the money up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to ask Toby and Alfred. Did you have anything else? Denise. Are you, 
Are you just, Toby and Alfred, are you just hanging on to listen? Or did you have something else about this? I'm just uh, watching what's going on. Okay. Alfred? I think I'm good, unless you want me part of the uh, driveway, the uh, designated of private road. No, because we're not going to do that tonight. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so you'll let me know when you're going to have the executive session meeting for me? Yep. Okay. Very good. Have a good night, everybody. You too. I'm sorry, John. What were you saying? You keep, you keep cutting right in and out, Thank John. you. So, John, back to your question. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, my if question um, and and statement. I hate this internet tonight. It's unstable. Yeah, it's really here. bad. Um, we don't. We don't. Um, my expectation is we're not going to be able to spend all that money. So I wouldn't want Melissa to be giving us a discount. We'd want to use as much as we can at this point. We wouldn't want, you know, and infusing that in, back into the community the best we can, we should just do that without discount. Um, if we could rent two offices, that would be 800 a month. That's 8,000 for 10. That's uh, $9,600 a year. That would eat up a chunk of that if we have no other use for it. I think and that comes with internet. That's a if, great deal. Yeah, it does come with internet and it's all, and it's furnished. We would have to provide our own, you know, computer stuff, obviously. Doesn't it have wow. to be spent though, before the, bef there's a period, how does that, how, do, how will that end up working when we have to spend it? By we would December? have to ask, we would have to ask if we decide that this is something we want to do. And I think we shouldn't do it until we talk to the office staff. Um, we could ask Melissa to bill us up front. From an accounting right. perspective, that's another, that's a question for Sandra. Yeah. It, Nick, it Nick, seems Nick, like, wanna... oh, I was going to say, it seemed like, you know, Judy said she wouldn't be interested in office space offsite because she needs everything in the office, especially everything that's in the vault. Yeah. Well, it's a lot close in, having a space in East Callis for, for the treasurer, for instance, it's a lot shorter drive to the office from there than it, to go to the vault or right. whatever um, than it is from her house. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I know that she said she was fine working where she's at, yeah. but we have to be careful that we need to think about what we're doing as what's best for the town. Right. And what makes the most sense for the town? Um, if she's working extra hours, because the internet connect internet connectivity is so bad, that's mm -hmm. also not fair to her. Right. So I think it's a bigger discussion if we're really serious about looking into this op opportunity mm -hmm. to have a discussion with the office oh. staff. Right. I agree. How much time uh, would be needed? to get everything in place. We would just have After to tell Melissa. About we, it with staff. we would have to schedule the staff to come to a select board meeting to have this discussion. And that would could happen on the 30th or the 7th of December. The Anybody 7th else? is not a, the seventh is not a regular meeting though. No. We're at no. we're at the point where that's a special where, meeting. Are we necessarily having a special meeting both and the We we agreed to have the special meetings on the office on the other Mondays that we don't regularly meet. Uh that's true. We didn't talk about whether we would do that on a Monday and I'm sorry, Rose, I'm sharing you keep cutting out. I'm sorry, I can't. If, if possible to not meet both of those times, I think that that would be great if we could put the issues into one meeting. Yeah, we could try to do that, the executive session and then the meeting with the staff. But all I'm saying is we agreed for other various reasons to meet on the Mondays that weren't regularly scheduled meetings. 
but we can figure that out. That's let's get back to our LGER discussion and see if there's so anything Denise, else. Yeah, thanks, David. Denise. Yeah. Denise. Yeah. Uh, John. Um, yeah. So you know, Judy did say that she wasn't interested that it, because the safe there's no safe there. But that said, my understanding is Judy does work from home. Um, Part of the time. And so, so, so let's just think this through. Um, we are right now looking thing at things through the current lens, but if COVID continues on the trajectory <laughs> it's heading both nationally and in Vermont and in particular Callis, Barbara, last I checked, um, was working with Judy in that office and they were comfortable in that space and it's allowable under the current situation, I think, for two they've people. In that they've space. changed that. But they it may come but it may come to the point where we can only have one person in that office at once. So if Barbara's in that office, that means Judy's not in there. And to have a space for Judy to work where she needs high speed and quality internet, we have it available. And she might change her mind when she finds out how good it is from say Sandra um, and vice versa. Vi Barb may have administrative stuff she can get done utilizing that space. Um, and you know, again, that she can't do because Judy needs to be in the office and using the safe. So I think we need to have it and have it available. Um, we don't know where we're gonna be comes February uh, and all predictions are it's gonna be pretty dire. So um, yeah. I don't want to see the town shut down because we didn't advance plan. It's well, kind of like buying a fire truck to, to put house fires out. You're hoping that there won't be another house fire but the expectation is there will be. And then the expectation right now is the COVID is gonna get really bad and we should be prepared. Well, I think it goes right this along with the same. I think it goes along with the same idea that I brought up with the with the road crew. We need to have some alternative plans here. And right now, Judy and Barbara are not working at the same time because um, there was an issue with maybe somebody's being exposed and being waiting to be tested. I mean, yeah. frankly, maybe Alfred would use one of the offices, you know, because he can't be where the crew is. Can't, we don't know. I, I think it's going to be in high demand. Uh, yeah. That's what I expect. And Cliff's got his hand up. <coughs> oh, go ahead, Cliff. Thanks, Denise. Um, everyone, Ruben Bennett from RB Tech has joined us. Uh, Ruben, just to get you up to speed about what we're talking about. Uh, as you know, we've been discussing trying to increase bandwidth at the town office. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like we have some options, but they are still down the road. Earliest we would see something would be probably around Q2 of next year. Uh, so now we're talking about other alternatives. If we can't bring the, the, the question that's been asked, if we can't bring the fiber to the server, can we bring the server to the fiber? And there are locations in East Callis that we could rent out that have those kinds of connections there. So we're wondering about the, the technical challenges of extending our office network to other locations. Do we do a mirror server or what's possible? Um, on the surface of it, it's a really good idea. Um, and uh, we actually have had one other client who just, um, peripherally related to, to COVID. Um, it was actually more related to a relocation in their office and sort of a reshuffle where they just took their server out and put it in a co-location space. Um, and they're all VPNing to the machine there. The challenge for you as the town is the same old challenge, which is um, if you're in the office and you have really iffy internet, you're not going to be able to get to the server. Um, so while on the surface, it seems like a, a smart plan, the, the challenge is it's the same old stumbling block, right? So right now, if you're not in the office, you have no connectivity to the server. Um, 
if you were to move the server out of the office, then if you're in the office, you will have basically no connectivity to the server. So it's basically so there's just no way to uh, make it. Uh, there's no way to make it so that could there we could be a on, ser server at the office and one at East Calis? Um, there's no way to to without impossible expense and complication. It's it's not trivial to have basically a, a mirrored instance of your server running at the town and elsewhere. Again, the you know the challenge is is bandwidth, right? If if you're running a mirrored instance, then um, you have to have some way to replicate everything that's done on one machine over to the other and vice versa because you're um, you're going to have bi-directional communication, right? So, um, and the software to do that, you're basically talking about moving to a virtualized um, uh, VMware environment with really expensive licensing that goes along with that. Isn't that the same challenge though? We, when we were talking last week, um, we were saying that having the the office would improve what I was understanding takeaway having fiber at the office would improve the ability of people to work at home yep. and, and obviously would improve their ability to work in the office because now both ends of the of Oops. the process are in the same you know high speed but so yes. Okay, but if we move the server to a place where there is fiber, mm -hmm. I understand that that makes the town office another, a third remote environment, if you will, from the server. So there's Correct. the home, the homes and whatever challenges they have. And now there's the office as well, totally that. But what we were hearing is people working at home, it's the server that's the problem, not their home. So I, so if we are able to move the server to the fiber, then we've addressed, so haven't we addressed the home to the server problem? And we yep. have, okay, so that we have addressed. And then we just have the challenge of, well, what if somebody does happen to be in the office? Same problem as before. Um, because Precisely. it's so bad there. Okay. So so, so effectively might, you would be if, you would effectively be choosing to to enable working from home at the expense of working from the town office. If that right. makes sense, right? Because you would have to. Uh, the, but why? The, sorry. Go ahead. No. Yeah. I, I I hear that, and that's. Uh, what we were the problem we were trying to solve last week was exactly the working from home and the fact that that doesn't work. Um, but okay, I'll stop. Denise, you have a question. Yeah, I wonder. So if if could we put the server in the rented office space, and there's no way for it to then work better? Would it? Could we put the server in the rented office space and solve the? person who's working from home in Berlin and solve the and and still have it accessible to the office staff. So you wouldn't maybe have a person there, but you would have the server there. The short answer is that the same limitation that's making it so that the people working from home can't access the server at the town office would make it so that if you're at the town office and you're trying to access the server off site somewhere, it's not going to work very well. Oh. I mean, do you have any it's, ideas? It's, uh, you know, well, the short answer is no. This this is a Vermont problem, and this is a problem that the state of Vermont has spent um, a lot of money um, to attempt to solve. And you know, the town office in Callis is experiencing exactly what a lot of rural Vermonters are experiencing, which is that the last mile is just not there. There is no broadband beyond a certain point once you get out of town. And all of these folks, like you hit this sort of hard stop 
and it's where the broadband lines end. And technically we call DSL broadband, but it isn't. And, and the town office is experiencing that. And everybody who is behind a DSL modem, whoever the provider is, is experiencing the straight fact that DSL is not broadband access. It doesn't provide sufficient bandwidth and it doesn't provide sufficient um, resiliency. So any place that you're limited by broadband to only having DSL is effectively not really broadband connected. Denise, can I chime in? Hello. I know uh -oh. we lost Denise, but uh, John, go ahead. Uh, oh, thanks, Cliff. So, so Ruben, just so you know what we're thinking, um, or one part of the conversation has been, you know, what if there there is office space in East Callis Village with fiber optic mm -hmm. plumb to it, and we could rent a couple office spaces there, and maybe maybe the 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 work effort that requires us to work on that server and utilize that server ongoing um could be performed in those offices that they would they would be separate from each other which as this covid thing continues to escalate uh will provide the a benefit of isolation that we don't have in our current office setting so i mean our situation is likely in fact we're already there i guess that we can only have one person in that big, huge office anyway, mm -hmm. right now. So what if we instead, and until we get high speed internet fiber to premises, which it looks like it might happen by next summer, um, until that happens, if we could relocate the, the functions that, that place that, that demand the use of that server to East Callis, rent two offices there, that would allow two office staff, instead of one being in the office, two could be in a town office. They would have that ultra high speed internet. Um, and we'd also have that COVID separation that we need. Um, and that would get us maybe through this tight spot until July or maybe beyond that. And that was, that's like one idea. And mm -hmm. we then relocate the server and then would, then the clerk, yes, the clerk's going to have to do some traveling to the our main office in gospel hollow to do the you know accessing the safe and doing that kind of paperwork stuff right but in terms of the work um the the share of the clerk's work and the treasurer's work and the assistant's work that requires internet access they could scoot over to east callis get in their covert covid separate office and get that work done so we'd have actually three viable office spaces where right now we have one because of the isolation that is now in, in play at our office. So that's like one line of thinking. And what do you think of that? Uh, well, uh, the short answer is that on a technical level, it solves all the technical problems with the exception of the, of the uh, making the town office basically an island, right? Um, on a technical level, yeah, uh, there's there's no reason that that couldn't work. So would there not be any, in, if we did that, would there not be any internet at the office? Or would there still you would still have, well, <laughs> we, we would have to do a little rejiggering of things to make it so that there was internet access. We, what you would end up probably doing is purchasing a firewall for the town office and then we, six of one, half a dozen of another. We would, you would need a, a firewall wherever your second office space is anyway. So you're gonna have to purchase a firewall. So you put what that, that. What does that cost? A uh, thousand ish. Oh, okay. not, not horrible, but not nothing. Um, and, um, and then you will, we can build a VPN between the two and it'll work however it works, which is not gonna be great. And it's not gonna run Nemric. I'm just gonna tell you that right now. So don't- But it, but it would run- <laughs> Don't but get your would, hopes up. But it would run Nemric from the space in East Callis. The space in East Callis will be local to the server. 
So, so right. the, the server client. and the Nimra client will be right there. So okay. what what the right. town office will have in effect is spotty internet service, just like it has right now. And we, we to would the probably to the, not mess with that. And to the extent that somebody's internet at home is better than the average bear internet, and mm -hmm. the then the the location of server proximity to fiber makes the home experience better than the getting now with the servers out in, in Gossip Hollow. That is true. I, I do want to be. So one of the real challenges here is that Nimric, the software itself, is not. It's really not meant to be running over a VPN. So I'm actually going to backtrack a little bit and say that that moving the server to a better connected place is not necessarily going to give Nimric users a much better experience when they're not local to the server. Um, so does that so does that mean if the treasurer was working at home, her connectivity wouldn't be any better? Well, uh, I'm getting lost in the weeds a little bit, but I I think it what means the that if we had... Is... Go ahead, Drew. So the way that folks are accessing things right now is from their home machines, they're basically remote controlling their workstation at the office. And right. so that's a, that's a workable solution because the Nimric application is on the work machine, which is on the same physical network as the server is on right now. So basically the only way that we could really do this and have this scale without throwing insane hardware and, and effort at it would be to basically take all of the workstations at the town office, set them up in the temporary office close to the server. It doesn't have to be physically, you know, close, close, but on the same, on the same network. Um, so that people can come in from wherever they are and remote control their workstation. So uh, the, where, I'm, where I want to make a distinction is that the Nimric application is not runnable without the actual client workstation being in close proximity to the server. It has to be there on the network. Cliff. Right, because when Sandra's working at home, she's accessing her computer in the office remotely. I get Correct. that. Yeah. yeah. Cliff has so, so if you move the server, but you don't move Sandra's workstation, then we haven't actually solved the problem for Sandra. We, we... Okay. So Cliff and then Sharon. So Ruben, um, would we be able to overcome some of these challenges you just described if we did move the server and now we could tap into Nimric Cloud? But but now you're talking about not just moving the server to a new physical location, but you're also talking about a migration to the Nimric cloud. <laughs> yep. So, is that, but, is that but possible? But the short answer is is yes. The slightly longer answer just, you know, that's a change that you can't really undo. And when the server goes back to the town office, whenever that happens, then you're going to have problems accessing Nimric at that time. <laughs> but by, but by then... A fiber connection. But by then uh -uh. we would hopefully have the better connection. Hopefully. I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't explore this option and I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just, I wanna make sure that yeah. I'm presenting all of the, and I'm like, I'm thinking on all of this sort of on the fly. So I, yeah, no, that's <laughs> I apologize fine. for like, I, I didn't, I forgot about that piece with the Nimric connection, but that's a really important piece. The Nimric application is, is architected in such a way that basically it grabs all of the files that are on the server and copies them to the workstation that's running the application. And you can't do that over a VPN. It will not, it will not fly. Okay, too much Sharon, to Sharon, Sharon, and then John. Yeah, I think it's just worth really noting that what we thought uh, we were giving up last week when we decided not to run, um, Fair consolidated. Yeah, consolidated. consolidated. Thank you. Uh, not to run consolidated to the office is what we thought we were giving up and 
um, function for folks working from home is actually wasn't there. It wouldn't have been there anyway because because they're still not in proximity to the server. Well, no, Cassandra's computer, when she's working remotely, if I understood Ruben correctly, her, her computer that she's accessing from home is right next to the server, right in the office. No, that's Correct. not what... That's what he just said. But so, it would be if we moved it out to the... I thought it was the, the town one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, John, you wanted to say something? I'm kind of looking at chat so, to see who wants to talk. This is a question for, for this is a question for Denise and Cliff, and then I'm going to keep asking questions. Um, who is using Nemric other than Sandra? Is Judy? I'm I'm not sure how much Judy uses it, but the listers use I'm Nemric. Frozen. Judy Are uses you? it. The listers use it. Um, Sandra uses it. Barbara uses the it. The listers use extent. it. Yes. Okay. I think everybody All in the, the town people. office uses it. It's basically the line of business application for the entire town office. Right. Okay. So, but all those people could utilize separate office cubicles in East Callis. And we could, for the most part, temporarily shut down the, the clerk's office so we can have, we would have greater functionality if we relocated the town office functions during this COVID situation uh, to East Callis until we got the high speed internet fired up, which we we're hearing there's a good chance of Ruben that we might have it by uh, midsummer. Just FYI, you missed that conversation. Mm -hmm. That Velco awesome. is yep. going to be running. Velco is running a, a fiber optic line to the substation in Kent's Corners, and then it would be a short run down the hill to the clerk's office, which we would then have CB fiber install. So, so okay. this would be a bridge that would solve a number of problems. Right now, we have uh, an office that only allows for one person to work there, given a whole bunch of stuff we, we won't get into right now, yep. but one person in the office at a time. Um, and so that same person could instead be in East Callis. Um, when the safe needs to be used, that person who may be using Nemric, the other person, like the treasurer, um, cannot use that office. So then it has to be remote. So if we had two or three even uh, separate offices in East Callis, we could have the server, we could have that, I don't know what you call it, mainframe computer parked right next to the server in one of those offices. The other two offices could tie into it. And we could have three people functionally operating at the same time on high-speed internet without delay, without complaint. And all that all the issues we have between the COVID and the poor performance uh, of the internet system, I expect would go away. The only issue is the safe, but that would then be something Judy could access or Barbara could access as a single person, which you know doesn't you don't need a computer to go into the safe and grab documents. So uh, this is what we're trying to suss out. Um, I think we need to really seriously consider this. Ruben, it, how long would it take if we decided to do this? How long would it take for RB Tech to relocate stuff to East Callis? Uh, and could it be done before the end of December and have it fully functionally uh, functional? The, honestly, the biggest question there is the internet. Is it already in place and running or is that yeah. getting set up by somebody? Yeah. No, the, the, no, the high speed internet is already there and it's either 200 up and down or 20. It's 220. Something is up and something is down, and I don't know which one. Yeah, all the office spaces are wired. It's been yeah. set up for that. They're all, yeah, they're all set to go. They got furniture and everything. I believe it's wow. symmetrical fiber, Ruben. Okay. Say what, um, It's 200 up, 200 down, I believe. Okay, something like that. Melissa wasn't sure. Uh, I think the short answer is yes, we, we should be able to pull that off. Um, so Ruben, uh, we might we have take one or a couple of us running a late night. 
Yeah. Um, because honestly, reason, our project reason. calendar is stuffed, but I also recognize that this is really well, and there's grant money this associated with it. There's a grant grant money and a deadline, as you're probably well aware of. Oh, we've heard all about them. We're yeah. scrambling like mad to help people maximize. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. These grants all over the place. So let me ask um, Nick or Bill or John McCullough, do you have any questions or comments? I see you guys are there, but I don't know if you have anything you want to say. I can't see you. So. But just on the last uh, question that Ruben addressed, if um, you could provide the town with a letter saying that you will complete the work by the 30th, and then we would have fulfilled our commitment in good faith. Then if you, for some reason, you run over and you miss the deadline, uh, we are not held liable to, you know, we'll, we would still be reimbursed because you had given us a guarantee in writing. And that would, that would uh, keep us out of trouble with the state of Vermont. And that would still make us eligible so, for the funds, Nick? Yes, it would. What are the terms As of said, those if, grants though? Do those, is there a clawback that reaches to the guarantor of the service? No, there's not. It just says, I can read it to you actually. It says um, if the circuit, if the vendor is unable to deliver um, due to circumstances beyond the control of the grant grantee, uh, then you will still be eligible for reimbursement. There's no clawback to the vendor. Okay. And I'll, I can send you that language if you like. Yes, please. Um, I, okay. I mean, on the surface of it, that sounds reasonable, <laughs> but I'm very mindful about setting expectations that we can't set, yeah. uh, that we can't meet. So um, I, I would want to be real, real careful about that. Under, yeah, that's we would hold you harmless, Ruben. John McCullough, did you have anything? Uh, I just wanted to add that the listers use the vault on a semi-regular basis. There are other paper records in the office that we access regularly when we're there. Just wanted to make it clear that the listers couldn't abandon the building. I'm sorry, you, you, listers couldn't what? We, we couldn't leave the building and, and still do our job. What if, what if all of that stuff was on the cloud? Jan mentioned something about if it was on the Nemeret cloud, then you could. We have paper records that haven't been scanned. Now, if somebody wants to scan oh, them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, see what you, I see what you're saying. Okay. That's all. But John, John, you wouldn't be able to use the office anyway because the office is limited to one person. So if, if the town business is going on there, you wouldn't be able to use it. And if there's no one in the office, then you can use the office. So that's, right. that's, that's doesn't what, affect that's what, you. That's what they're yeah. doing now, John. The listers generally go in on Fridays. Right, so this doesn't change that. Okay. Except for the network system is elsewhere. Okay. And then. Uh, no, I'm good, I'm good with that. I, I thought there was talk about just closing the office down. No, re okay. relocating critical functions. Okay. It Bill, can't did be you done have all at once. Bill, did you have anything? Uh, Denise, thanks for asking, no, I'm all set. Okay. So it sounds like we need to maybe put together some kind of a proposal um, as to how this could work. I mean, we're, we're gonna have the minutes and all that stuff, but if this is something we're seriously considering we need to have a follow-up conversation with the office staff. Yeah, I would think that conversation needs to happen pretty quickly. We might be able to uh, meet with them. Denise, you and I might be able to have a preliminary meeting with them and then arrange to have the board meet with them on this coming Monday. 30th? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would want to, I, I'm okay with the two of you meeting with them, but, but I think for my part, the message needs to be that this is a board decision yeah. and we are, we are seeking your input, not your, um, no, I hear what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I get it. 
Yeah, that's totally what I'm, I'm thinking yeah. too. But give them the opportunity to think it through and say, okay, here's the challenges we see. Here's the benefits we see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I mean, they might, have, they might have things that we're not thinking about. And they would so. have some time to think about it and bring it to the board because it's a short week this week. Yeah, right. No, I'm I'm okay with things we haven't thought about, but we do, as you noted earlier, Denise, have to keep in mind what's best for the town, right? And how to keep our town operations running. And um, well, the yeah, the town operations are critical to function. You know, if this is critical issues for the town. You know, being able to pay bills and you know, all these things like that, we need to still be able to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of jazzed. Ruben, thank you very much for coming to the call. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to help. I hope that, um, I hope that I'm not missing anything important. Well, you know, this, but this gives <laughs> you honest. an opportunity, <laughs> but Ruben, this, this gives you an opportunity to see where our heads are at, what we're looking at. Yep. And if you think of other stuff, um, we would invite you back to join us on the on the thirtieth. Okay. Well, what um, I, I think what I'll do is I, I'm going to chew on this over the next few days um, and uh, kick it around with my team. Um, and if I come up with a showstopper, I'll let Cliff know right away. Okay. Thank you very much, Ruben. Sounds really good. Thank you very it. much, Ruben. Yeah, you're very welcome, Thanks, Ruben. Nice to see you, Ruben. Thanks. Nice to see you all. Have Ruben. a good have a good holiday. You Ruben. Ruben. as well. Yes. Ruben, yes, chew on it, but don't choke on it, huh? Uh, right. Yes. No, <laughs> no choking. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank all right. you. Thank you all. Have a good night. You too. Take care. Well, that was very helpful. Yes, Nick. Just want to point out the obvious that um, the clock is ticking, the sand is running through the hourglass. Yep. And if we're going to have any of these vendors be in a position to respond to us, um, it's going to have to happen really fast if the end of yep. December is close. Yeah, I think we got to decide what we're going to do right off. And maybe we can, or maybe our goal for the 30th um, will be to come to that decision. And if not, then I don't know what to say. Well, Denise, what of Go ahead, Sharon. Sorry. Um, so one of the, th the questions that I think is important is under some accounting practices, you can't spend money on services not yet received. Yeah. And and that's, you know, like I love the idea of renting in these callus, um, but we would want to be careful and maybe even with Jim's input on what kind of a lease do we enter into so that we can pay up front, as you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can find that out for sure. Um, and I can also can ask out. for clarity on that from the Department of Taxes. Say, let us give us reassurance that we can do it this way. Yeah, and, and Sandra can check with the auditors and see about how this would work. And, we, and I can certainly send Jim an email. Um, all right, good. Sounds like we got more of a plan going forward. That's great. Was it? Was there anything else that folks were going to report back on, Cliff? I just want to put it out there in front of the board that if for whatever reasons it turns out that we can't pursue this option, we have how we have come up with some other options for taking advantage of the Elger funds. It might not cover all of it, but uh, keep that in the back of your minds that we do have some other opportunities that we could tap into. Okay. You mean, well, and, and like, like, but not to solve this problem, just other things. Right. If it turns out that this solution that we just discussed is something that's not going to work, that we can't pull it off in time or whatever reasons it goes south, uh, there are other needs that we have that the Elger funds could be applied to. Okay. All right. Are you ready to move on? Yeah. Everybody ready? Okay. Uh, no, 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 what? Denise. What? Can you uh, talk to Melissa Bruff and get her to, uh, how many units does she have available? Do you know? 
I think she had two when I talked to her. Do you want me to find out for sure? Could you, could you get her to draft up some contract language? So, yep, so it's ready to go for next meeting in the event? Yep. We're ready to sign? Yep, so I'll ask her to, to go. Yep, I'll ask her about it. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, um, we have several more things to do. It's an almost nine o'clock. Nick, you're welcome to stay, but if you're, you've had enough of us, you don't have to stay. <laughs> uh, I will tear myself away. Okay, Thank same you. thing for you, Bill, unless Bill has something else for us. You're Thank welcome you. to stay, it's a public meeting. Okay. Thanks, Nick, um, thanks, Bill. Um, real quick. Um, Janet Ansel is now not ready for us to take up her request. She has to work out, and good luck with this for her, she has to work out something with Consolidated first, and then do something with E911, and so she's not ready, so we're not going to do that tonight. Um, but we want to talk briefly about the situation in Maple Corner with regard to the wandering horses. It was pretty good for a while there, John, when the horses were at in your yard. Um, but they are back now in Maple Corner and are all over the place. I mean, I get phone calls and emails and you guys have seen them. I think the majority of concerns expressed and we've been down this road before and there's very little we can do. Um, I think the board has sent her a letter previously, but I don't, I didn't look to see. I should have looked to see, but I didn't. Um, we could ask, you know, our town attorney to draft a letter and send it. Um, we could send a letter as the, as the board. So I'm just, what do you want to do? Rose? I um, sent Denise a response a couple of days ago saying, you know, maybe the board um, should send her a letter um, regarding the public safety hazard this is causing, um, not to mention property damage um, and, you know, then the health of these large animals. I mean, um, if you think about the animals, the horses themselves, um, to be spooked by vehicles or um, people, um, to not know where their next meal is coming from, to be exposed to the elements. Um, and then, you know, um, we're trying to do our public duty by um, making sure the people in that area, in that part of town feel safe um, and that their property is protected. I understand the horse is just recently ate somebody's hay that the woman had covered up her gardens for the year um, and the horses came by and made a mess and ate all of her hay or straw that she used. So um, yeah, I mean, it might not do anything, but I, in my view, I mean, I, I don't think that we should just sit idly by. I mean, we wanna be responsive to the townspeople um, and we want, for whatever good or not good, at least try to communicate to this person that, you know, this is not okay. Denise had to step away for a minute. Um, I would j jump in and say, I agree with you, Rose. Um, I don't know if it's better, if anyone has a bead on whether it would be better if the board composed this letter or the lawyer did. My initial thought is maybe it would be better if the board composed this letter we could have Jim look at it of course but um, you know try a try the approach of hey we're all a community but we're trying to watch out for each other mm -hmm. Sharon or John do either of you have thoughts there John I see you got your hand up yeah my internet's flaky so I apologize um, so as Denise said, I, I had those horses at my place pretty much since May, I guess. Um, and I knew that this problem was going to rear its ugly head as soon as I 
had her take them for the winter. Her horses, George Duncan Sibbert. her horses started blowing through my fences. And there's another story I won't get into the detail of and caused a lot of damage. And, you know, in the summer, I'm better able to cope with that stuff. But when I'm in winter mode, trying to lock stuff down and get things ready for winter, I, I can't be fixing fence, high tensile fence, spending hours upon hours doing that. So she had to leave, get the horses out of here. Um, you know, next year I could do it again, have the horses. They're not a problem at our place in the summer. Um, and, uh, but, you know, I don't know what to tell you about convincing Elizabeth that what she's doing or her strategies somehow are wrongheaded uh, because I have a pretty friendly relationship with her as a result of her horses staying at our place and she doesn't listen to me so at all which is one reason the horses are no longer here um, so I, I don't know what the solution is other than the town building her a corral, you know? I don't know. She doesn't have a property that it really affords itself to have even one horse, let alone three horses. And one is a big, big, big gelding. And he's rambunctious and doesn't respect fence and blows through everything. Um, and then the others follow him. So I don't know what to tell you. Um, Unless the town, I think the only other solution is that the town, if we could find a place where she could win her horse, if there's some person that would like to have the company of horses in their pasture and they happen to have fencing up, that's the problem. She does not have a property that lends itself to keeping animals of this size and number. Um, she does feed them, they are well fed, but you know, they horses are very curious and they're not going to want to sit around bottled up in a little pen they're going to blow out and then if some lady has hay bales around her house trying to keep the winter out they're going to take advantage of that um so uh, this is not i'm not providing any answers exactly unless somebody knows of somebody who's got a farm other than mine that's willing to take these horses in um and we could maybe orchestrate help guide her there didn't didn't last was it last year john when she was um out of commission for a while someplace in new york or something had the horses for a while and then she got them back right yeah the horses were i don't know location some, i think some, for a yeah. number of reasons remember yeah yeah we don't need there to was an ailment reasons. remember yeah right there was an ailment yeah. with the horses. So that has corrected itself. Um, yeah. But wherever that happened. I know. So, but yeah, there was another location. I know we've tried to deal with this before, and there's really, there's just not a lot we can do. Um, and, the, you know, the, the contact for her to maybe get her to do anything is her father, who lives out of state, and he's quite elderly. Um, so anyways, I'm not sure what we can do with a letter. I don't know if a letter would aggravate the situation or not. At least it would put us on record as having expressed our concerns. My concern is that somebody at some time is going to hit those horses and some horrible thing is going to happen to the horses and probably the person who hits them. So it's kind of like hitting a moose a moose because they're up tall. And I don't know, it's beyond me to, under, to understand why she doesn't see that. I, I just don't understand why she doesn't see that. But anyways, Cliff, do you have any thoughts? And then Sharon? Yeah, while you were away, Denise, I had said that I, I agree with the idea of sending her a letter. Um, and I thought that it might be better if it's something that the board composed and sent to her rather than having Jim do it, but we could certainly have Jim take a look at it before we send it. I mean, she has uh, engaged the select board on a couple of occasions. Everyone, I believe, saw some emails from her. Yeah. So it it might be a starting point for a dialogue. And I, if we can at least get that much accomplished, 
we might have a chance of achieving a positive outcome. Yeah. And if not, well, we're no worse off than we are right now. True. But at least maybe we should we send her a letter and invite her to come and discuss this with the board or something. Um, I just want to make sure that whatever we put in the letter is is accurate as to what we can we can't we cannot do. Exactly. Sharon, you have thoughts? I agree. Uh, I agree with what we're saying. I agree that a letter from the board is more neighborly and friendly. Although I would, I think we should pull up one we sent before. I I don't remember, but I trust your memory on this, Denise, and and build on that, keeping our friendly tone uh, and as friendly as possible yeah. while making our yeah. point. And it may not be a bad idea to, to run it by Jim. Um, in case there's something we can say that's not occurring to us. Although I think we've had that conversation. Yeah, we have. I guess I would, I agree. I think it would just be good to maybe have him look at it before we send it. That's all. Rose or Katie, can you look back and see if we sent a letter? Katie, maybe that's a Katie thing to look back. So you can do some kind of a search, I bet. Okay, so um, let's see if we can find our letter from before. And then if, if you're ready, we can try to move on to some of the other items here to do. Some of them should go fairly quickly, I think. Um, I'm gonna propose we're behind in our budget work. Um, we should have already been doing meetings and planning for budget, but as you all know, we've been meeting on union stuff, so. I'm going to, I would propose that um, we start out with maybe looking at level funded and what would a 1% or 2% increase look like. The Cemetery Commission has already said that they're going to level fund their budget. Um, and I think if you would let, would authorize Cliff and I to spend some time working on the first proposal. So we can get cracking on this because I'm really getting concerned. It's getting in, almost into December and we haven't even started. Yep. That I'm okay with it. Yeah, that sounds good. I love, I love that you're thinking in terms of one or two percentage points. You guys want, um, if you what want is, some, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You know, go ahead, Sharon. No, I was just going to offer, you know, if you, want a Cl cliff i think is pretty facile with excel too but if you want yeah. some help with um analysis feel free to um call in yeah me. yep will do okay having said that cliff and i'll work out a schedule um sean do you want to talk about chitman solid waste we just got word that um what the state's gonna do john do you want to just Go into that briefly. Well, there's not much to say other other than they had the public hearing that you participated in, Denise. Yeah. Um, the state did, and then subsequent to that, you know, we met uh, with the the Central Vermont Solid Waste District, and they agreed to pen a letter to the state concurring with our position that, um, and many people's positions and town's positions that uh, the, that they have the cart before the horse, the state agency of natural resources should uh, shift their approach to focus on the enforcement action and, and resolving that. However, they do that and not be issuing permits to um, after, after the fact permits to in some way bless, this is weird, bless their, their behavior. Um, so the, the public comment closed, comment was sub submitted by uh, the, the Saw Waste District. It was a letter, our Saw Waste District and the executive, I'm sorry, the chair of the board and 
and also the Northeast Kingdom Salt Lake District wrote a letter that more or less mirrored it. Um, and the state, I guess, concurred or decided to not continue forward with issuing permits after the fact permits. Um, are you hearing me? This is weird. I don't know what's yep. going on. Yeah, no, I can hear you. Okay, yeah, I can hear you. hear you. Okay, it's these weird things are coming through. Oh. So that's where we're at. I don't know anything else. The state has just stayed the permitting process and we'll see where things end up. And then they've stayed it until the, uh, the uh, enforcement action, quote unquote enforcement action, whatever that is, um, is, is that resolved. the one? Is that the, no, is that the enforcement action through the AG's office or separate? Yeah, the Agency of Natural Resources has enlisted the state's counsel, the Attorney General's office, to represent okay. it in either negotiating a settlement or taking this matter to court. So that's where things are. We don't know what's going on in their shop at the AGs yep. in terms of the negotiation. We under we do understand they were negotiating. T.J. Donovan did say that yeah. in the press, and he thought a, a a settlement was close, and that something would happen by the end of the week, and that was two and a half weeks ago. So yeah. I don't think that's happening. Um, okay. Well, thank you. We'll continue to keep yeah. updated on that. <clears throat> a couple other things happening. Our annual meeting with the East Montpelier Fire Department to look at their um, proposed budget for FY22. That meeting is Thursday, December 3rd at 7, and that will be on Zoom. So as soon as they get that information, I'm hoping they, um, I've got to do an, uh, an agenda for that, but hopefully they'll get us that information soon. I'll be on them about it. And then um, East Montpelier, we usually meet with the East Montpelier Select Board after we've met with the fire department so that the two boards can talk about what's been proposed for the budget and see where we all um, sugar out on their requests. And that meeting is going to be on the 7th at 7. Um, any questions or comments about those two items? Okay, moving right along. Um, Cliff, do you want to give us any updates on the town hall, friends of, or IT? Yeah, a few quick things. Um, Grady did finish the exterior painting project. Um, Scott hey. Bassage, uh, David Sheets, and myself all did a walkthrough with Grady, and we felt everything looked to be in good order. And so Grady, Grady is going to be uh, issuing uh, invoice for the final payment. Uh, I just want to make sure that there's no other concerns by any other members of the board before uh, we authorize Sandra to pay that. I think it looks beautiful. It turned out great. And uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, Grady developed a, a bit of an emotional attachment to the project and you could really see it as he was walking around with us and we were talking about different aspects of it. Uh, we, we really found the right guy for the job, I think. Okay, um, well, then I'll give Sandra the heads up that that'll be coming. Um, he also will give us the uh, certificate that uh, shows that the lead abatement was uh, done and completed and done properly so that we'll have that certificate on file. Interesting factoid, uh, there was over 800 pounds of lead paint chips removed in the course of the 800? 800 pounds plus. Holy schmoly. Yep. That's a lot of lead paint. Yep. So it's a, so it's a different coat. Cliff, yeah, um, and and select board chair and vice chair and Rose, um, what do you think about? I mean, this guy went over and above the call of duty. I, I am blown away by Grady and his his commitment and you know his his performance on our our collective behalf. And I was thinking if we could just get him a simple acknowledgement beyond just paying the bill, maybe. Um, 
gift a gift certificate to Buddy's Burgers or something, you know, hundred bucks worth of burgers. He could take yeah. Wimpy out with him. Yeah, I could go have a burger. I would support um, that. I, think, I can also tell you that I know he's an avid ice fisherman, so uh, gift certificate ah. to Sporting Goods Place or something would also be welcome. I'm certain. Okay, so let's yeah. get a, let's get a card and. Is um, Onion River still open, or is there a shop closer? They're not to really. They're not a fishing place. Oh, they're more. Uh, the, the Berry Place. The place said uh, Rick Sanborn's place. What is that? Ar archery. R&L Archery. R&L Archery. Oh, R&L Archery. Yeah, we can get a gift certificate there. All right, I'm just making a note. I'll make a motion for that okay. expenditure hundred dollar gift I'll certificate. I'll second. For, I'll second that. Yeah. Let John second it. It was his idea. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, let's vote. Rose? Aye. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. Sharon's an aye. She's aye. got a thumb up. John? Yes. Okay. Well, that's a fun thing to do. Yep. Okay. Um, Another issue regarding the town hall, uh, we need to think about um, care and feeding, maintaining the building over the winter. Uh, we did not uh, finalize the management agreement yet with the friends group. So I'm wondering if we want to solicit the services of Andy Felice to make sure, check on the building periodically and help us be aware if there's issues to address. Uh, we want to make sure that we're running some level of heat in the building through the winter as it gets colder so that we don't uh, have any damage. And um, the, the, the plywood needs to at some point be leaned up against the windows so that the snow coming off the roof is not going to cause damage. Um, wondering if there's any thoughts or other ideas there. I saw a thumbs up from John. Yeah, it makes sense to me to see if we can get Andy back on board. Would you contact him, Cliff? I can certainly do that. Okay. Sounds uh, good. Okay. The only other thing I had with regards to town hall, we discussed this before, and I think everyone was on board with the idea, but I couldn't find it to verify 100%. Uh, but the alarm system there still needs the redundancy line hooked up. Yeah, so and so does that mean I, okay? does that? Does that mean I won't get calls at three in the morning? That means you won't get calls at three in the morning as long as the board is okay with getting that service activated. Uh, basically, the, the phone lines are in place. We just got to get the uh, consolidated to turn on the service and then we plug it in. What's the additional cost per month, do you know? Um, when I checked their rates, they said, you know, oh, it's 35, but that doesn't include the other fees and taxes and stuff. So typically, I'm uh, a bare basic phone line I'm thinking is going to run about 60 a month. I, in, in, from my perspective, I mean, I don't always answer it at three in the morning. Um, but it is a concern if I don't, and then there's a real problem. It's going to go unresolved. So I would be in favor of let's just get this done. And this is not a COVID issue, so it's just something we're going to have to pay for. Yeah, we could not use the COVID funds, unfortunately. Right. Are others in agreement? Okay, do we need, let's do, you, Cliff, do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I, I move that we activate a, a second phone line to the town hall to uh, act as a backup for the alarm system. Okay. I'll second that. All right, let's vote. Rose? Aye. I'm an aye. Cliff? Aye. Sharon? Aye. John? Yes. Excellent. All right, do you have any IT? I mean, we talked about IT quite a bit already tonight, but... Is there anything else we should know? Yeah, no, we can we can refrain for now. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, let's we, we're like we need to do three different sets of minutes, I think. Okay. 
Let me uh, pull them up. Can, can we do that next time? I really am beat. I want to get out of here. We can. Um, if we do it next time, I'm probably going to put it closer to the beginning of the meeting so that we actually get it done. Yeah. And we can all look at it ahead of ahead of time and make sure we're all good to go. Yeah. I like that too. Hey, Cliff. Hey, just, John. Just, just to, uh, I meant to ask Ruben this. Make sure Ruben, when he sends his proposal or whatever he sends to us, um, that he has a price tag on that, huh? So it's ready to go. Okay. Please. And then we have to get that list of other items that are LGR or whatever, or whatever, grant yeah, eligible. Yeah. So we, I think we need to be ready to act. Yeah. Um, and if everything else collapses, I hope it doesn't, because I think we're going to be in a big, big trouble if we don't have an alternative work site here. Um, so. Okay, so next regular, well, now next meeting um, on the 30th, we're supposed to be talking about personnel issues, but it looks like it's going to get overtaken with some other items. Um, Sharon and I are going to meet on, I think, Saturday to pick up where we left off, and hopefully we'll have a draft that we can send out to the rest of the board. Okay. Right, Sharon? Uh-oh. Did Sharon disappear again? Oh, no, there no. she is. Okay. This internet, this internet thing tonight has just been really awful. Um, all right, is there anything else that anybody wants to bring up or we need to do tonight? Okay. Everyone have a, Rose already had her Thanksgiving, so. I did, I did <laughs> yesterday. I right. had turkey, turkey, broccoli, casserole, leftovers tonight. It was yummy. Yeah, yep. that's the best part. Well, of I said time. everything else is screwed up, so why not have Thanksgiving on Sunday? So and it go. was just Greg and I, you know, Thanksgiving dinner for two. Yeah, I with got candles. leftovers. I got leftovers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I hope hopefully. I mean, we usually have a a group here, and we're just not doing it this year because we just yeah. we can't can't do it. No. Yeah. So I hope everyone has a safe and healthy. Yes holiday yes i wish the same to everybody yep I'm right. Right. Yes. can we get a motion to adjourn so moved second okay rose you want to vote aye i'm an aye cliff aye john yes karen aye okay i just want you guys to know how much i appreciate how much time and thought into all of this everybody puts into it it's very much appreciated you too denise thanks for all your leadership appreciate thank it you. thank you thank you everybody yep good night okay. good night, night, night team so, oh, Rose, Rose? dave delcor yes. oh dave delcor oh does he have any questions oh